Welcome. This is the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group meeting. Today is the 19th of June, 2024. Thanks for being here. Topics I've got on the list include several related to um, upcoming releases and recent releases, recent UI discussions, and UI improvement activities. Are there other topics? Oh, and Spring Security 6 upgrade. Are there other topics you would really like to put on the agenda? Could I um, share a link to uh, just a GitHub repo? Um, just like a little kind of proposal doc I've put together. Oh, good. All right. So proposal doc from Jan. I'll, let, I'll ping it in the chat. Um, it's still very rough, but there's a couple of pages that are kind of good to read. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, if you drop it into the chat, I will put the link in here and we'll show it on screen. Okay, so here's what I've got. Proposals, tree main. Oh, very good. Okay. All right. So great. Okay. Anything else that needs to be added to the agenda? All right, then let's get started. So on the on the FYI list, uh, for your information, 2.463 released last on Tuesday drops support for Java 11. We now require Java 17 or newer. And 2.452.2 was released the week prior as an LTS, it supports Java 11, and the next LTS line will also support Java 11. New LTS coming in early July. Chris Stern is release lead and will choose the next LTS baseline at the towards the end of June, 26 June of 2024. However, we need to remember that we must choose a baseline that supports Java 11. So 2.462 is the last weekly to support Java 11, it looks like a pretty good choice. Any questions, concerns, or comments on any of those topics? Okay, next topic then was recent UI discussions. And here, Jan, we had some discussions going on in this GitHub pull request about the removal of the disable project button. Any insights you want to offer or any, any things you want to discuss there further? Um, I wouldn't call that a discussion. Okay, all right. So maybe, maybe, maybe a first question is: Should I, as a board member, have stomped on that thing? As a, as a, this is inappropriately phrased. Good, good point, Tim. Fair. I think, yeah, I think it was inappropriate. I think Uli did step in eventually, but I don't think it was handled very appropriately. Good. Okay. Yeah. So Uli's comment here was: Hey, look. Let's bring the discussion to a place, bring it into a discussion, a place where we can where we can do it. Good. Uh, Jan, your comments? Yeah, no, I, I fully agree with, with Uli there. Um, I, I think as work hopefully continues in this area, we'll hopefully see improvements that will mean this this change makes more sense. Um, not every uh, kind of merge request, for example, might make total sense about the full context of, of what we're trying to achieve. So, yeah. Good. All right. Thank you. So, in terms of in terms of Uli's Uli's response here, I apologize. I should have stepped in earlier and said, "Hey, look, your comments are are unduly harsh, out of line. We talk to each other much more politely than that." So, so thank you, and my apologies that you had to take the brunt of that. So there was also a discussion on hide the preview link for default formatter here. I think Jan, it was between you and Daniel Beck. I hadn't seen any other discussions on it and I, mm -hmm. I'll post mine. I think I'm fine without it. I was just experimenting with it yesterday. Anything yeah. you want to share on this one? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm also, I'm not kind of pro or against it. Um, it was just more of a discussion point really. Um, from a user's perspective, um, if your Jenkins admin, for example, hasn't changed that setting, the fact that it's plain text really means nothing to you. 
Um, so then you click preview, the, the preview output will look the same within reason. Um, Daniel Beck mentioned there was a use case, um, but it's pretty much, it'll show you basically what you've entered. So it's, it's not really providing a great deal of value. Right. And, and, and that was my experience. I was, I actually was using, using, I use a markdown formatter and I was astonished mm -hmm. when the preview showed something different and then realized, oh, I had bad markdown. So in my case, the preview did exactly what it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, it's just broken. No, no, my markup was broken. It was not my, the preview that was broken. Great. All right. Thanks. The last one. So proposals repo, go ahead and give us an overview here, Jan. Sure. Um, so it's very, very rough. Um, but just wanted to kind of start formulating some, idea, some ideas around um, kind of upcoming work to try and get us closer to the prototype that was demoed a, a while ago now. Um, so got four areas, really. Um, the app bar and the cards have been kind of fleshed out. Um, so the, the app bar, for example, um, got a picture of what we're trying to try to kind of go for here. Um, got a branch of just kind of trying to try different ideas on how we might approach implementing it. Um, and then got some kind of discussion around kind of API changes for developers and how they might integrate with this. Um, yeah, this is like a um, bit of work to kind of move some of the items in the sidebar to the app bar. Um, so this is for like stuff like the jobs and um, builds and the dashboard. Um, so it's essentially a new API for Jenkins developers and plugin developers um, to integrate with that. Um, looks like desire. So the idea is actions from side panel go up into the app bar. So mm -hmm. in this case, embeddable build status or right, one I, I'm yeah. familiar with doesn't give the user a lot of value on the side panel anyway. And so what you've mm -hmm. done is shrink the size of the size, successfully shrink the side panel by moving something that is relatively low value to the user, this yeah. embeddable build status pit link into Mm -hmm. something that they must click explicitly or they hover over it to get it out of the app and to see it in the app bar? Yeah, so currently you'd, you'd click the three dots. Um, that'll show the menu. Um, so as part of the, the API changes, um, developers can now like group their actions. So um, say the kind of test plugin or minting plugin it might make sense to group those together under one uh, group. Um, you also can provide color for your links. So the delete action makes sense to be red. The build is kind of green to draw attention to it, for example. Um, so it's a bit more customizable than what we have now. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the actions really. Nice, all right. So did you want to, did you did we want to take a look at the others as well, any of the others as well? Um, I think just the, just the cards one, um, okay. the navigation settings are, basically just bullet points at most. Um, but the cards one is a look at um, essentially a new UI for the jobs and uh, builds. Um, kind of give some background as to the reason behind this change, um, as well as um, what the actual proposal is. So in this case, um, the sidebar on the far left um, doesn't always provide the most value. It can get quite lengthy, for example, like if you go on ci.jenkins, it can be you know, 20 items long, for example. It's not always easy to navigate. Um, and then in the middle of the kind of job or build page, you'll have the summary kind of summary items. Um, so it feels like maybe we could combine those two kind of concepts. Um, and that's kind of the idea of the cards. So they're like interactive little views of those side panel actions. Um, they're kind of more visual than what we had previously, um, hopefully more responsive um, and then consistent as well. So in this case, the cards, the what I see is a top row that looks like it has three cards, the console output, mm -hmm. details and artifacts, and then three cards on the second. And if I click the the expand in the top right hand corner there it would it would, ex it would come out to be larger for me is that yeah. that's the general idea mm -hmm. yeah so 
Um, this view would give you small snippets of information, um, like say the test results. It won't show you say what tests have failed necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, it'll just give you a quick overview, um, so like at a glance information. Um, so if I want to drill into that, I'll click the expand button and it'll give me information on what's failed, what's passed and so on. Oh, I like this. Nice. I had missed, I had missed getting to this picture. I was just going to show, come on, I have to show ci.jenkins.io because for me, this is the real one. When I look at pick, pick a plugin, this one right here, and now watch, watch my list just explode. Oh, whoops. There it is. <laughs> and it, 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 there's a, there are many things in there that are conceptually close to each other, but I have to navigate the whole list to find the thing. Great. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So we were here. Okay. So, so this is reducing clutter by, and, and yet still one click away from being able to see all the details, I think is the concept that you're, you're looking at. I click that expand yeah. and now I've got details that I had before. Yeah. Good. Anything that you want to, to share? Are, are you looking for feedback, comments? Um, yeah, I think I'll, um, I'll probably share this on the forums. Seems like it might be the easiest place to kind of gather feedback on, on the different topics. Um, okay. Yeah, definitely open to feedback. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else on the pr proposal? So feedback, you're okay if it either comes in the form of comments or mm -hmm. comments on the files or issues or even pull requests. If somebody wants to yeah. have a, an active pull request to it, you'd be fine with that as well? Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, super. Any questions from others to Jan on, on the, the two items he's presented? Okay, thanks, Jan. Very good. Any other discussions that I miss or things that we should top review under the discussions topic? Okay, so the next topic is recent UI improvements. And released in core, rewrite the build history widget. Jan, thank you very much. I am a delighted user of this change. This, this has been, uh, it's truly been a treat. It's in weekly now, not yet, not yet in an LTS, but the look the grouping by date, uh, it, it looks better, it feels better. Thank you very much. So notice the group by date, cleaner, cleaner layout, just a, just a better experience. Thank you. Anything you want to highlight on that, Jan, in terms of things people needs to need to be watching for? Um, nothing, nothing so far. Um... We'll see when more users use it. I'm sure bugs might pop up or something like that. Um, we'll probably have like a follow-up merge request just to do some refinement. Um, noticed an issue on weekly today um, where when you first open the page, it's a little bit flow to load, for example. So um, might have a merge request up just to kind of tidy that up a bit. But so far, so good. Great. All right. Thank you. Moving the console output to the, so the console output link to the app bar. Just on the previous one, Jan, are you planning to have a look at the build time tree? Because it's linked from the widget and it looks so weird. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a kind of branch of just playing of ideas um, right now. Um, idea is to kind of steal some of the kind of niceties from the Blue Ocean UI where it shows different branches, um, such as like showing like commit messages and then whatnot. Um, so and then Tim, maybe a nicer I'm, graph. I'm, I'm not sure what Tim was referencing. So help me out, Tim, help me understand. If, what you, just, if you just go to a job. Okay, so let's go to a job like this one, okay. And then if you go, you sell on the builds, the expand icon. You think it might expand and give you more detail. Oh, oh, and um, I see. Got it. It takes okay. you to a uh to an old to an old graph picture sort of thing and then Right. So kind this of, is kind of kind of like a table, but it, there's no table there. This um, this well, yeah, th so this one I, I should show one that actually has some history. 
So let's pick one like uh, this one that I think will have several builds in it. Yeah, so here when I click that, it shows me what is the old build time trend. I see, right? Whereas yeah. that used to be the word trend and now it's an expand. Mm. Got it. Okay. Sorry, and back to you, Jan. You were saying what, what the plan is there? Yeah. Um, like, like Tim said, kind of expand the budget. Um, kind of use some of the ideas from Blue Ocean there, um, such as showing commit messages and so on. Uh, make it a bit more useful uh, than what it is currently. I'll, um, I'm just building the branch now. I'll, I'll post a picture in the chat um, of kind of what it currently looks like. Um, just shrink that. Cool. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Any questions from others on rewriting the build history widget? Okay. Next, then, was the console output link moving to the app bar? So before the look was this, and now after console output is here, right? So that download view as plain text are up on the app bar, not in, in the page. Let's see if I can show that correctly here. So if I look here and, oh, it's an individual build that I have to look at, isn't it? Now, console output is here. So okay. is this a uh, pipeline job? Oh, this is a pipeline job, right? So I need yeah, to use a freestyle. There's, um, there's a merge request open to uh, kind of align that. Got it. So let's look at one that's not a pipeline job. This one. Nope, nope. Is this again a pipeline? <laughs> Sorry, I, I have a number of different job types in case you can't tell. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I'm not able to show it. Okay. So we'll we'll continue. Questions from others on the, the console output link. For me, that looked like the, the exactly right thing to do, much simpler. And so, Jan, you said that pipeline console output coming in a pull request, is that to one of the pipeline plugins? Uh, yeah, it's like workflow job. Um, it, it's open now. I think it just needs a, an approval. Ah, good. Thanks. Okay. Next one was display the number of users. And so here the change adds this count of users right next to the word users in the, from the users page. Jan, anything you wanted to highlight there? Um, yeah, really tiny one. Um, that's also just to get the kind of uh, the feature in the app bar component um, more so than being terribly useful for that page. Um, but it'll be kind of hopefully used again across Jenkins, um, such as on the build screen in the future or as pages and whatnot. Great, okay. And then weather icon positioning, this one was one that was visible on Safari, if I remember right. No, maybe I'm wrong here. Yeah, this was a, Oh right, yes. This was the the this was a Safari specific thing. Yes, stroke widths of weather icons in Safari at non default magnification. Got it. So just a bug fix. All right. Anything that I missed on recently released? Okay, so I had one item that needs an LTS backport. I think we made a mistake when we did a backport to two point four fifty two point two, and we've got this bug report. And what it shows is we, we just, in 2.452.2, we, we lost some styling that was there in 452.1. So it looks like this, and that styling was lost. And it's, it's not a problem in weekly, only in LTS, and just needs to be fixed in a dot three. Jan, were there, were there others that you, things that you wanted to highlight on the coming soon? This was my list, and my list is 
known to be flawed, imperfectly ordered. Are there some that you'd like to talk about more than others? Um, I think maybe just the command palette one. Um, I think that PR is pretty close. Um, okay, so let's. That was just a, a concern from Daniel Beck over a a plugin. Can you put in the categorize user properties one, please, Mark? Sure. Say that. Tell me again. That was what was it, Tim? Uh, ca uh, categorize the user properties. Oh yes, yes, right, right. Thank you. And I'll find that PR shortly. Great, thank seven you very two, much. Seven two six eight. Oh, you say seven two six eight? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, great. I'm looking for reviewers, please. I had one comment from Jan, and that's it. Great. Okay, so let's we'll take a look at that one then, Tim. Thanks very much. Seven two six eight. Did I get that number right, Tim? That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay, so Jan, in terms of the search with a command palette, so nice usability improvement here that instead of the search dialog remaining in the top right-hand corner, it now takes focus and appears up at the top as a command palette. Do you want to highlight what's what's going happening there? Are we? It looks like we've got one request for change from Daniel. I think you said you'd addressed it. Mm -hmm more testing needed or what what do you think the next steps are um so there's there's currently a plugin i think it's called lucene search something like that um it's like a, a fancier kind of back end for jenkins's search um daniel raised that this change won't necessarily work very well with that plugin mm. um so we're kind of just kind of brainstorming different ideas of of how we can improve that that plugin um but otherwise i think the kind of unit tests are passing acceptance tests are passing so I think we're in a good position once um, that plugin issue is resolved. Great. Okay. So good. Okay. So it looks, it's looking, it's moving forward. This is advancing. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. Tim's on the next one has, is, has not been advancing. We need to get reviewers on this one. We've, I've really liked the categorization we did on the, manage Jenkins page, that really helps me. So I, I, th I think this one, I'll, I'll commit to be part of the review on this, experiment with it, et cetera. Because I, I really have like global configuration pages with their categorization. It makes it much easier for me to find things. Tim, was there anything else you wanted to highlight on this one or any things that, that were of concern for you? Uh, nothing of concern. I think it works works well, works nicely. Um, splits up the page and it makes it consistent with uh, like Manage Jenkins and uh, so that's all categorized and it's a lot clearer on how to use it and whatnot. Great. All right. So so we need reviews and and that's 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 a good. Okay. Then I assume that. Or are user properties something that plugins can adjust and adapt? So will we need to apply this also to a few some plugins, or is this just a Jenkins core change? Uh, I've applied it to a few plugins already. Um, oh, okay. The SSH plugin, Theme Manager plugin, and Custom Header plugin. Those are the main ones. Um, I looked at what I had in my test setups, and those are. I, I didn't go through every user property, but I went through everything in my test setups that I could see, and those were the main main ones, but can easily add more later, but it demonstrates the concept. Great. They're, they're all merged and released, so if you update your plugins and test it, you'll see them all. Oh, like, oh, good. So they will already categorize. It doesn't require a new Jenkins core version for me to already get categorized. Okay. No, it uses the same, same thing as Manage Jenkins did when it got uh, categories and that there's a string value that you can that you can use in the meantime, and then it's deprecated. So when you update your core version, you'll be forced to change to the type safe version. Okay, that makes sense. Good. All right. So, so I can start with hey, use a string, and then after Jenkins core has this it has this improvement, my when I depend on this version or newer, I'll get hints yeah, that I be, should switch. I think I think you'll be forced to. I ah, think okay. It's probably... It's, even, even better than hints. Okay, good. 
All right. Thank you. Yeah. It's either deprecated or restricted. I can't remember, but any any comments from others any other any questions from others to tim okay then i had a line font weights and sizes assuming that this one was likely to arrive pretty soon uh jan anything you want to highlight there um just just a few kind of tiny merge requests recently um just to make things a bit cleaner and tidier um cross jenkins but Hopefully Great. nothing breaks. All right. Thank you. So on the others, on the active work thing, are there other pieces, any of these that you want to highlight specifically? Or should I just drop them from the list? I think some of them have been there a while and and maybe paused. I'm okay with, with whatever. Uh, I'm not actively working on the top two. I might come back to the first one. I'm not sure on the second one. Um, I thought the second one would just be a simple thing, but it's just a lot more. Com I think it's, it's too many comments, so I don't know if I'll come back to it. Okay. Great. And Jan, on this one on flexible layouts in Jelly, Tim Tim had commented in at the last UX Sig that we really did need a consumer for this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume um, that that's go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, there is a there is a merge request for the design library now. Um, oh, good. Which implements that. It adds like an extra sidebar on the side. Um, but it, it's nothing urgent, really. Great. All right. Thanks. Any other changes that need to be noted or would benefit by discussion here in the group? That wasn't labeled properly, so it wasn't showing up in my list. Oh, sorry. Um, what wasn't the design library pull request or the flexible no, layouts? No, the flexible layouts didn't have the web UI label on it. Oh, just oh. added it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and you should be able to label it yourself, Jan, by the way, with a uh, okay. like a slash label. S slash label space web dash UI, right? Some, uh, something like that. If you either put that in your description or a comment. I should get them labeled properly. Yeah, and I, you remind me, I should be using the web UI label to, to review the list. Did I miss, are there any of these that we should discuss further? Yeah, I was having a look through them, which is why I missed that one. Um, I don't know, I asked Alex if he was an old one he had. I feel like quite a few of them Capitals to be reclosed. Some of them are quite old. So there's 18. Right. <clears throat> okay, good. So we can, we can, I can remember, remind myself that the web UI label is a good way to find those. That's great. Keyboard Any... shortcut tool tips. Oh, okay. Let's take a look at that one. Keyboard shortcut. This one. I've got, uh, there's a question for Jan on there. Ah, uh, okay. I don't know if you saw it, Jan. Uh, I've, I've not, I'll, uh, I'll take a look. Yeah, okay. it's um, about the structure of the jelly file. Um, <clears throat> and I, I mostly got it working with, Dan, with what Daniel was asking about, but there's some specific styling on there, which I wasn't sure the best way to solve. Just mm. your feedback. But yeah, that that patch mostly um, gets cleans up the code, but then yeah, there's a styling thing to look at. Uh, just have a quick look at the others. Is that redesign executors widget, which I wouldn't call a redesign? Um, I'm not sure if anyone's looked at that, but it does this moves the progress bar around a little bit. Oh, interesting. But this is, oh, this is build executor. This is not, not the build history widget. Okay. Yeah, it does, but the progress bar is in like two different places. I, I don't understand that. I haven't really looked at it too closely, but it's been open for, it's been open for about a year. But yeah, I wouldn't call it a redesign. 
I'm assuming it's been redesigned. Has it has this been redesigned since it looks? Well, I wonder, is there a conflict? Yeah, it's got conflicting files. Uh, is that the one where I think that's where Marcus changed it to not show executors um when they're idle, I think. Yeah, I I, I think that's at but, least that's what that conflict looks like to me is this. I think is is where it says offline. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking. Yeah, I'm looking at it on CIG and CIO at the moment, and um, <clears throat> I mean, it's certainly not formatted very nicely. Um, it, it looks differently to when that PR was done, but I'll just put a screenshot of what I'm seeing. It's like the um, job name is on the next line to the build number. So. Ah, okay. So, yeah, I'm, so and I'm gonna I'm gonna put that screenshot into the notes here, so I I've got it. That was let's see that we were on. But yeah, I'm not sure if that that one. I don't know if anyone wants to look at that one in detail, but I don't think it doesn't really do very much. Okay. All right. Um. Any others that you'd like to look at? Um, there's the gzip one. I'm not really sure what why it's tagged as web UI. Don't think I would have done that. Alex Alex did two years ago. <laughs> um, this one, this one, support for viewing GZ compressed artifacts. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I, I think it means is that you can view gzip from by, from artifacts by clicking on them. You can view them. So it does some form of expand in order to list the contents of the gzip and then you see the con contents? Yeah. So if someone gzips a text file, you can view it. Yeah, I think, but I think Tim, your comment there is is the right one. I'm not sure that this is a this is a thing for core, is it? I mean. Huh. Okay. It's not very much cars. Like it's <laughs> six lines of code. Right, right. You're right. The the test the test is comparable size, and this is this is not a huge bunch of interesting. And that that's a nut wow, impressive. Okay. Yeah. any others that we should we should consider so that one i should put into the notes just a minute where was it gee this one okay It needs review and more discussion. Good. All right. Anything else? Okay. Uh, last. Oh, go ahead, Tim. Saying. I don't think there's anything too much. Use a sidebar for Matt for Manus Jenkins. Is that working? I think there's still, um, yeah, so I think I'm going to um, update the proposal, drop in that repo, um, yeah. just to kind of go through different scenarios for that one. Okay. Yeah, I, I might close this um, merge request um, mm. and then reopen after some discussion. Yeah. Got it. Okay, good. Any others? No, I think that's probably about it, unless anyone else has got any. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I would like to try and get the list down, but there's 18. Right. A bunch, a bunch of them are.
been around for quite a while. Yeah, actually, I and I like that. Let's let's put a note eighteen with web UI label that that reminds us we we hope to decrease that right. Let's let's make progress. Thanks. Good good reminder. All right. Last point I had was just a, a review for to be sure all of us are aware. Spring Security Six upgrade is in progress. So Spring Spring has announced the end of life of Spring Framework 8.3, Spring Security 8, or no, 5.3, Spring Secure, Security 5.8, all end of life, August 31 of 2024. Um, Jenkins depends on Spring Security Framework. So as part of that end of life from Spring, the, the upstream project, we're in the midst of moving to Spring Security 6. But Spring Security 6 requires Java 17 and requires Java Enterprise Edition 12, Jakarta EE or 12, Jakarta EE 9. And so it requires EE 9. It, that requires, therefore, that we go to Jetty 12. So we've got a whole bunch of transitions we're going through in this time frame. Uh, Basil Crow and Adrien Le Charpentier are both very actively working this thing. Step one was Apache file upload two, done about four weeks ago. Required Java 17, done just this week. The next step is move from Jetty 12, 10 to Jetty 12, running Jakarta EE 8. And that looks like it's likely sometime in July. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll be early or late July, but it's it's sometime in July looking. The next one going to EE9. So EE8 is javax.servlet imports. EE9 is jakarta.servlet imports. And retaining compatibility across that change is, is huge. There's an awful lot of work being done. Right now, Basel's got a prototype branch running, and I'm testing the prototype and have been running it for several weeks. It's got some known issues. He's identified many plugins that are a number of plugins that need, need to be addressed. He's working through test harness, using plugin bill of materials. Just be aware that this is a major, a major set of changes happening with the ultimate destination being a 30 October, 30 October 2024 first LTS release that um, uses Jetty 12, EE9, and Spring Security 6. Right. So LTS will be out of support for two months. Right. Exactly. By the time we get here, we will be well beyond the end of end end date for for spring security support. And if we had to, the discussion was if we have to fix a bug in spring security 5.x, we can we can fork it and fix it if we must. Mm, I guess it's not all just about that though. It's about being being out of support for a core security for like enterprise and that sort of things. Not ideal. Right, right, agreed. Yeah, we. I, I unfortunately, I'm not sure what to do about that. But you've got a, a valid point that it's it's scary to be using a component after August 31 that the upstream project is not actively supporting. Yeah, um, just checking the LTS schedule. So, uh, so we have 24th of July is the next LTS line. Right, and then we haven't we haven't put the new dates in after that. Uh, so this is the twenty fourth of July, and then twelve weeks after that. Yeah, which comes out there is to there is potential that we could have a new LTS line sooner if if we need to. Yeah, I'm so I'm not ready to, and I'm not sure that the code will be ready to. So mm. so the it's just that we need all the time we can get for this i'll we've we've lived with shipping older components i think it's okay that we we live with shipping the older spring security for this 
two month period. So let me put that in, Tim. That's a good point. 24 end of life for spring security 5.8.x. And it's 5.8. That is what we're using, isn't it? Right. Yeah. So spring security 5.8 and spring framework 5.3. They right, both have three, yeah. they both have that same same end date. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any any questions, concerns there? Help is certainly welcomed. We'd love to have other people helping with test, with exploration. There are a number of issues identified in the Jenkins issue tracker in Jenkins JIRA. Includes many areas where people can help. Do you have the issue ID? Uh, several of them, yeah. Hang on just a minute. Let me bring it up. JIRA. So let's put just a minute. Okay, so... I need to find it. And because I'm a JIRA admin, I can't just share my screen immediately. Just a minute. All right. So LT, no, L, it is EE9. There we go. Okay. All right. So. Come on. Okay. Seven, three, two, five. Oh, five. yeah. That's the EE8 to EE9 one. Good. All right. So this one, Jenkins 73255. Let me put that in. And then the predecessor to that, EE8, is 73120, like that. And then that's probably the best one for right now. I think I've got one or two others as well, but those two already... So let's show this one, for instance. You can see a number. This is the Jetty 10 to Jetty 12. And we've got several plugins that need to be updated to be ready for Jetty 12. Now, one of them is a plugin I maintain, oddly enough. So I've got, got work to do. <laughs> I don't see any of mine, <clears throat> other than I depend on the OKHCDP API. Right. So, so there's an, there's an in incentive, Tim, for you to play. That's good. Any other questions on, on spring security six upgrade? All right. Any other topics for today before we end? Okay. Then thank you very much. Recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours. Thanks again. Cheers. Cheers.